this point, I want to back out the 8 millimeter bolts. Like I said, it's the 8 around the perimeter, not the 4 in the middle. So at this point, all we got to do is grab it, pull this straight up, make sure all the lines and harnesses and hoses don't grab on, and there we go. Lower intake is off the vehicle. And this is one of those brackets I was telling you about. Now, they're both identical. This one has a harness attached here and here. If you see where it turns, it kind of makes an S. Once it goes down, it gets flat and it's got a studded bolt on this one. Now this one right here is the one towards the front of the engine as far as where the pulleys are and it's only held on with the studded nut. The other one actually has a uh, coolant hose going to it with a bracket so you'll have to take a nut and the stud loose. So this one we'll just get on here for a deep 13 millimeter. You want to try ratchet wrench it's fine and go ahead and back it off. Go ahead and back it off. Once I back it off it's loose enough to where I can do the rest by hand. I'll go ahead and just take that stud all the way, studded bolt all the way off though. So it helps. If anything gets my way, it says not going to where the harness is still attached to it. So now I can reposition if I need to. If I want to take it off, I can then snap it from the harnesses, and there we go. Now, like I said, the two brackets. This one's already loose, bolt's already out. This one's the next one. Like I said, I've got a coolant hose that runs from the back of the engine heading towards the front it's got a nut on there so I'm gonna back off on the nut you may have to use your actual ratchet with a 13 millimeter if you can get your ratchet wrench on there great there we go we're gonna get the nut off first I'm going to pick up on the hose there's the nut got to position the hose out of my way so that I can get down onto the actual bolt. And that's what I'll be working on next. Alright, so both brackets have been unbolted from the cylinder and now I can get to the bottom row of my 8 millimeters. I can get to my top. Now I gotta reposition a couple wiring harnesses on the back side. So what we're looking at here are the solenoids for the cam phasers. You've got an intake cam phaser back behind the valve over here and an exhaust cam phaser back there. So each one of those corresponds to that particular phaser. Now they got one connector you need to squeeze in on for each one. Single lock. Squeeze in on that. Once you get that squeezed in, you will now have all the electrical disconnected as far as everything routed to the valve cover and everything that plugs into it. Now you got a harness here that kind of drapes over the top of the valve cover. Now we've got to release it. It's attached in multiple places. Let's get that up off there because we don't need anything attached to the valve cover if the valve cover is coming off. So we'll go ahead and start pulling on the Christmas tree fastener using the same group of tools that we were using earlier. We'll try to get it released. And move it around. Now the camshaft sensor on this left side head back here has a single lock so you just press in pull back now it bolts in directly to the valve cover so of course I can't take the valve cover off till that cam sensor comes off now it's got a T30 Torx that we're going to have to take loose go ahead and back it all the way off once we got all the way loose we should be able to pull on the sensor itself and take it out. It's got a little rubber seal that sits right here on the valve cover that makes contact right here and that is your cam position sensor for the left side head. Now the bottom back corner of this valve cover has a uh, eight millimeter studded bolt that sticks up that helps route this harness. Now we've got to get the harness off. Should be able to just pull straight up. You have to work with it a bit. There we go. Kind of reposition it now. I've got to work around to the side too because it also snaps on this other corner. So I've got it off the stud. Now I got to get it off this back corner by using our typical tools. We use how to get the fasteners off because it's just routed in place. So we're using like a Christmas tree fastener. 
now it comes down to the valve cover. We've already got access to the top. We've already loosened the brackets on the bottom. We've repositioned the wiring harnesses on the back side and front side. So now we have access to all the 8mm bolts and the studded bolts. We'll go ahead and start backing them all off one by one and get them to where they're completely loose. Alright, now we got the valve cover up. We got the gasket where it's come off and might be stuck to the head in places. Pick it up. Like so that's where those two cam phaser solenoids slash actuators are. You can actually see the back side where they protrude through little pins. They get actuated. So here is your valve train on your 3.6 liter. Like I said, cylinders 2, 4, and 6. You've got an intake camshaft, you've got an exhaust camshaft, you've got an intake cam phaser, exhaust cam phaser. Now it's got variable geometry as far as the cam timing, so depending on how the, it is controlled with that actuator, it can vary slightly. Now where the harness comes over here, we've got one connector right here at the purge solenoid. It's got a two-stage lock, press it on one side, squeeze the back side, slide it off. Uh, it was attached right here with the stud. And we also got an AC pressure switch we need to unplug. Now we can take it loose, pull it back, and start rerouting the harness so we got more room. Now we need to go ahead and work on getting this harness moved out of the way. We've got it released from the valve cover when we took the valve cover off. Some of it was attached to the brackets we've got off. We've got a coolant temp sensor over here. We've, I've gone ahead and unplugged it. The battery cable for the alternator needs to be taken off, as well as the generator field connector. And then you've got your AC compressor clutch connector further down. Uh, the rest of this harness moves over to the side up to where the air filter box was. So we start taking those items loose one at a time. So grab your harness, start working it over to the driver's side, kind of ball it up as you go, and reposition it so it's no longer in your way as far as working. We need as much clearance as we can. Then we start dealing with the actual catalytic converter where it's bolted to the head, the alternator, the front timing, um, cam phasers, and the marks that we're going to be looking at. We need access to all that so the more wiring we can move out of the way down to the bare block and cylinder head is what we're going to be looking for. Alright, so we got a little lower closeout panel right here, splash shield that's covering up the balancer and the belt. We need to get taken off. Now we got two 10 millimeter bolts, one here and one up in here. But before we get that, we got two Christmas tree fasteners, one here and one here that we got to take loose. We'll be using our basic panel popper. Kind of work my way around, try to get them off without breaking. That's one. That's two. Now I can work on getting those two 10 millimeters to get this cover out of the way. Get the back one off. Get the one back midway back. There we go. We got the cover out of the way. And before we loosen up that alternator bottom bolt, we need to go ahead and get the serpentine belt off. Now we've got the splash shell out of the way now. We've got our serpentine belt tension over here. Now it's got a square cutout where you put a 3 8 ratchet in there. The longer the better, that way you get more leverage. And just like any kind of repair we take the serpentine belt off, it would be ideal if you make you a diagram showing the pulleys and the belt routing diagram as far as which way it goes. That way when you go back with it, you're not having questions. Did it go this way? Did it go around this pulley? Did it go over that pulley? Or are you having to search for it? Uh, I'll try to attach the serpentine belt diagram for you just in case it's reference. But like I said, good rule of thumb in case someone doesn't give you the reference is to make you a little simple diagram showing it. Now, all we got to do is rotate this thing counterclockwise. And when we do, we can start taking the belt off different pulleys. And there we go. You just go ahead and take the, the belt all the way off. 